Well, as we have hit the new year, many people look to make changes in their lives so that they can have a better lifestyle, but that can cover a variety of different elements. And when you think about one's finances, you can look at so many other different things to improve your financial health, even something like paying off your mortgage. Michael Roberts is a professor of finance here at the Wharton School. Michael, great to have you in the studio. Great to be here. So the element of paying off the mortgage, obviously, is something that so many people deal with. Uh, but right now, it's probably even in more focus of being able to handle it, especially with how interest rates have gone up. And that can obviously provide a lot of stress for people. Yeah, it's probably people's largest monthly or recurring payment is that mortgage. And it's there for, you know, 10, 15, typically 30 years. So it's, it's definitely a stressor. Uh, from a psychological standpoint. Um, but I think if people understand the, the mechanics, the basic finance of, of a mortgage and the broader picture of their finances, it can be less of a stressor and actually become a potential asset. How so? So I'll use myself as an example. Uh, we, we had bought a home seven, eight years ago and had refinanced into a mortgage that was... 2.75 percent oh god bless you for getting yeah. for getting that low mortgage yeah 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 <laughs> we, we, we then sold the house but that's another story okay so so we had a 2.75 percent mortgage now you know three four five six years ago um that was certainly low but it wasn't low relative to what i could invest money in and earn basically a guaranteed or, or very safe return, right? If I put it in treasuries, I sure. wasn't earning 2%. I was lucky to get one. Yeah. Okay, but fast forward now, three years to today. And if you're sitting on a 2.75% mortgage and interest rates on treasury securities, for example, or CDs yeah. are above five, well, that's an opportunity, Sure. right? So, you know, you want to... You want to think about a mortgage, you know, as rationally as we can in terms of our opportunity cost, right? If, I, if I'm paying 2.75 on a mortgage that I originated 5, 10 years ago, and now I can earn 5 plus basically guaranteed, yeah. there's really no incentive for me to pay that mortgage down. I'd be throwing away money effectively. Yeah. How much do people consider the elements of the benefit that they can gain from that type of scenario? Because I, I wonder if sometimes that's an element that is missed along the way at times. It is, and, and understandably so, because you know ultimately that decision is a broader trade-off. Sure. It's not just a simple, well, you know, I'm paying 275, I can earn five, it's obvious. Sure. We need to think about tax implications, right? Because I gotta pay taxes on any of my earnings. But as much as it, it pains me to admit it, I, I have to because it, I see it in myself. You know, there's a psychological value to not having what, what uh, academics like to call dead overhang in some yeah, sense, right? Sure. Uh, being free and clear on the house and not having to make that monthly mortgage payment, there's a, a, there is a real psychological benefit to that. And depending upon your personal makeup, that might outweigh the additional money you could be making by not paying it down more quickly. And, and yeah, I guess it really ends up being the individual's decision, what their scenario is, because even something like paying off an extra $100 a month mortgage on your mortgage can be such a benefit longer term when you when you look down the road. No no doubt about it. You'll you'll shorten that mortgage, right? So you will be free and clear sooner. But but I I worry that some of the other benefits of of not paying down that mortgage and investing or saving that money sometimes get lost in the discussion. You know, one of the one of the issues with paying that mortgage down quickly is you're basically investing in the house, right? right. You're, that, that's you're reallocating your investment from a stock, stock market, bond market, whatever it, it may be, into real estate, and that can create problems. Number one, you can become incredibly under diversified, right? If all your wealth is sitting in that house, yeah, and anything happens to that one asset, you got a big problem. But number two, that's a highly illiquid asset. So you start plowing all that savings into the house and something bad happens, you know, medical emergency, whatever it may be, and you need money, you got a problem. Right. And in many cases, there's just not the flexibility with 
paying into that or paying extra into that than say you know having the savings in a in any other type of account exactly i, I can sell stocks instantly or bonds yeah. instantly uh, so you give up a lot of liquidity you give up some diversification benefits when you go all in on the home so i i I think people need to think about these other considerations in the context of their broader portfolio. Thank you for listening to The Ripple Effect. We hope you found this episode informative and engaging. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review so that we can continue to bring you the best insight from the Wharton School.